Alrighty, so a lot of people on the Nanlite user group Facebook community have asked whether the Forza 150 is bright enough to use outdoors. So we're gonna test it out today. Uh, and I wanna show you guys a very simple two light setup utilizing the sun as the third light, I guess. So kind of like a three light, a three light, what is it? Three point lighting setup. So we're gonna use the Forza 150 through a softbox as a key light, the Forza 60B through a Fresnel as the uh, hair light. And they're gonna utilize hopefully the sun or maybe the clouds, depending on what happens today, uh, as a fill light. So, let's, let's get set up, let's get it started. So we're gonna shoot this way for two reasons. Wind is coming from this way, we're trying to stop the wind from hitting the microphone. Also, uh, the sun is off to, I guess, like the side of me, which means that it's kind of acting as a fill. We'll have the key light coming from this side. Uh, and then we'll probably have a hair light coming from this side behind us. If we were to shoot this way, this is actually ideal if you were using the sun as a hair light, because obviously you can utilize that there. Bring your key light here, which does work as well. The main thing you don't want to do, Bart, is shoot this way. So this is with the sun directly in front of me. You can see that my features are just super flat. Like you don't want to shoot like this because you get what's called panda eyes, which is like these dark rings under your eyes. Uh, which is not really flattering. It doesn't make many people look good. So keep that in mind. Always keep your sun or your key light off to kind of like the side and you get the most amount of shape on your subject's face. All right, sandbags, let's stay safe. We are going to run everything off batteries today just to keep it nice and simple. Now also keep in mind, I haven't tested this, so I don't know if it actually is powerful enough to overpower the sun but 150 watts is typically a lot of power, so. And I'm confident in this light that we'll be able to get some good results. I honestly still can't believe how small this light is, hey? Now, Nanlite hasn't actually released the, uh, we haven't actually finished the battery handle for this just yet. It'll be coming out soon, but basically it'll be kind of be like the Forza 60, which I'll show you in a second, where you have the battery grip, the battery, and then it plugs directly into the light itself. But because we don't have that at the moment, what we are gonna do is I don't need this. I don't know why I got that out. We are gonna be utilizing this bad boy. So this is the Kame TV uh, V-Lock charger. It is BZ2C, the code. Basically what this is, or what's special about this is that you can put two 14.8 V-Lock batteries on it, and then you can actually output 24 to 33.6 volts, which is super duper cool. Uh, and most V-Lock chargers don't actually allow you to output 24 volts or more uh, and this light can operate on 15 to 24 volts so it's perfect for this light until we get actually the uh the official nan light handle with the battery on it as well so this will do for the time being so this is the nan light 60 centimeter softbox i believe very very cute it's designed for the forza 60 um, but because this obviously has the same mount as well we can utilize it on the Ford's 150, but you'll notice that I actually have a full-size Bowman's mount on it. Uh, so I actually swapped it over because I used it with the Forza 300 on a shoot recently. Uh, I just didn't have enough space to utilize my big 120 centimeter uh, softbox. So that is why it's got that mount on it. But you can also adapt the Forza 150 and the Forza 60 to a full-size Bowman's mount anyway. So it really doesn't matter if it's the mini one or the full size one. So this is the Nanlite mini Bowens to full size Bowens adapter. It comes with all the uh, Forza 150s and the Forza 60s. So then you can use your full size Bowens mount accessories on this. So I'm gonna clip this on here. Now I'm gonna swap this mount so we get a bit more adjustability in it. So we're gonna actually utilize the mount on this adapter because if we utilize this, then the pivot point's kind of here and this will hit really quick. So by putting it on this one, can you hear this bird behind me? Eee, eee. Shush. Uh, so by utilizing this mount on the adapter, we can now go all the way down and all the way up. So now we could just use the, the reflector, I guess. The main reason I wouldn't use this as a key light is just because the source is just too harsh. So the smaller your source, the harder your shadows are gonna be. If we compare this diameter to this diameter, obviously this is a lot bigger than this, bigger the source, softer the light's gonna be. The downside bar is that obviously when you increase the size of the source, the intensity is gonna drop. So it'll be interesting to see with this modifier on, if it's still bright enough 
to overpower the sun. We might not be able to, you know, overpower it with this on, but potentially we could overpower it with this on. So that's something we do need to test and see if it is bright enough to uh, overpower the sun. All right, for batteries, we are using Came TV Mini 99s. These are my go-to batteries. I freaking love these things. Uh, I have six of these, so I use them to power my lights when I'm on location. Uh, basically everything, actually. They're just so handy to have. Let's flick this onto DC power. Let's flick this on. So this is on. And notice the Forza 150 does a really slow off. So that's off. And then, is that on? It is on. This is what I was saying before. When you modify your lights, so we're making the source bigger, it's going to make it softer, but it also decreases the intensity. So if I was to take this off, so obviously it's not really doing much, and put the reflector on. So if I was to do this with the reflector dish on, then we can see that it is extremely bright by compared to, say, like with the softbox on, but I think it would be overpowering the sun. Kind of. Does it look terrible? Oh man, that is just so bright. Okay, let's let, maybe let's just take a step back. Because that's just so bright. It's still, oh man, I can't even open my eyes. It's killing me. So uh, that is the Forza 150 with the reflector versus kind of daylight. It's a little bit overcast, but uh, not too bad. Now, if we were to, let's turn that off for now, put a hair light on me. So for this, we're gonna be using the Forza 60B. Again, I'm trying to make a kit that's really small and portable. This is that battery handle that I was talking about. And now you have a portable 60 watt light. And this thing, so this is a 99 watt hour battery. This is 60 watts. So you can power this at full power for an hour and a half, roughly maybe a little bit more, hour and 40 minutes, which is super cool. And look how light that is, like, and bi-colored as well. So if we need to adjust to make some color temperature differences, which I'm going to utilize in this setup because we want to add some color contrast in, then we can do that. So now Forza 60 by itself will not be bright enough um, just because it's only 60 watts. We saw that the 150 was just enough to overpower the sun, but little hack to add more output is to get what's called a Fresnel lens. This is the Nanlite FL11, specifically designed for the Forza 60 and the Forza 150. And basically what this does, if I take this off, so essentially the light comes in here, it hits this lens, and it basically just magnifies it. So depending on how far away it is, so we can adjust it, determines the angle of the beam that we get. So all the way in, we get a 45 degree beam, all the way out, we get a 10 degree beam. So this is at 100%. So we can see like how intense it is. I have to go quite close to uh, actually get light on the ground. But if I put the Fresnel on, and this is on the spot, we can now get basically the exact same intensity, but look how much further away I am, sort of thing. And then if I was to come into that same position, we get a much brighter light. But you can see how spotted it is. And then if I adjust this out, we can see the beam gets bigger and bigger and bigger, which is pretty cool. So what we're gonna utilize this for is as a hair light. Now the main problem we're gonna run into is that it's gonna be a very small beam, which means that I'm not gonna be able to move too much once we set it up. Um, but it'd be perfect if you say like a little you know, talking head setup where you're not, not really moving that much, but you just want some sort of separation for the background because this is gonna be a bit darker and if we can have an edge light, we'll see in a sec how much it makes a difference and how much it just separates me from the background. Is that hitting me? It looks like it's yeah. actually in the perfect spot. Yeah. Oh, I can kind of see myself. Oh my God, everything's bloody happening today. No. no lights, this is just overcast daylight, which is gonna look somewhat decent because it's a very soft source, so it's not gonna be super hard. But if we want to accentuate things, we can add a key light. Forza 150 with a reflector dish. No softbox because it's just not quite bright enough. So this is just adding a harsher source uh, just to add a bit more contrast. So I can... Contrast is just the difference between your light and your dark. So this is lighter than this. 
So we're getting a contrast, which is adding shape to my face. And then if we add in a hair light, we're now getting a separation. Let me take my hat off because this will be a bit easier to see. We're now getting a separation between myself and the background. So we've got a darker background. If I turn that off again, your hair is going to be the most notable because obviously I've got dark hair and it's a dark background. But when I turn on the hair light, which is basically what it's supposed to be, uh, it just gives an edge, which then gives a separation between myself and the background, adding a three dimensionality to the image. Without this, it's just very much the same. It's very soft, very, like there's not too much going. You might get a bit of a shadow under here because the light source is up here, but there's not a whole lot of depth going on. So that is the main thing to keep in mind when you are lighting subjects. So I, I was confident that the Forza 150 would overpower the sun with a reflector dish. I had no, no doubts about that. I was hesitant about with the softbox, but just because you're making the source so much bigger, like look at this. It's gonna be hard to see, but like if we compare this, so this chip, the COB, is the size of the light source, and we're trying to modify it to become from this to this. Like you can just see how much bigger we're trying to make the source, and by doing that, we're gonna obviously lose intensity. And we saw that, like this is powerful enough to overpower the sun with just the reflector dish, but then as soon as we went up to this, there's just not enough output to soften it this much to then overpower the sun. So if we had like a, a bit of a smaller one, this is a 60 mag, we had like a 20 or a 30 centimeter softbox. I don't even know if they make that, uh, but that might be better, but uh, yeah, fun little experiment. And again, this is just a really cool, compact, really minimal kit, like tiny lights, tons of output, enough for most situations. But like the footprint is just so small, like we, we can run them off batteries. This is gonna run for an hour and 40 minutes at full power. This on two batteries should last about the same amount of time, 100, 200 watts of battery. But like an hour of power on a tiny little setup like this, you can't really go wrong with that. That's actually, it look like a cool dude now. But yeah, that is a quick little setup. Uh, I hope that answered your question about if this is the Forza 150 can overpower the sun or not. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down below be happy to answer them. Uh, if you wanna join the Nanlite user community group, I'll leave a link down below as well. Uh, it's amazing content being posted up there. Uh, and also just obviously answering questions and chatting to you guys and yeah, it's a good time over there. If you did enjoy this video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you wanna find out any info about any of the products that I've used in this video, I'll leave them in the links below. Otherwise, stay creative and just be you. Have fun. Yeah, Boom. full video.